All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's message is brought to you by Gary, the Law Office of Gary Green, for all your suing needs. All right, we're doing 5 2 bisectors of triangles. All right, bisectors of triangles. This one's a doozy, so take some notes and rewind it if you need to, stop it if you have to, and just get another teacher if I'm a crummy one. All right, first word you need to know is concurrent. So, concurrent. That means that three lines intersect. That makes them concurrent. Now, that point right there, that little spot where they all hit, is called the point of concurrency. I'm going to be using that term quite a bit, so it would be good to pay attention to that. So we've got concurrent and then point of concurrency. All right. Now, we're going to be talking about good stuff with triangles a lot, but they all have points of concurrency, but they all have different names for that. Okay? All right, here we go. Gosh, that's an awful. I'd never do that again. All right, let's try this triangle right here. Say I want to draw all three perpendicular bisectors. Okay? All the perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular means they're going to be in the middle, and it's going to be perfect. That's bisect, and then that's perpendicular. So it cuts that in half, and that's perpendicular. Let's see, cuts this in half right there, I'd say, perpendicular. And then this one would be right here. All right, guess what? That's perpendicular as well. They're always going to hit. When you do the perpendicular bisectors, for any triangle, they're always going to hit at the same spot. That's called their point of concurrency. Now, there's a special name for that, okay? When the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle meet, it is called the circumcenter, if I'm saying it right. Yep, circumcenter. It's called the circumcenter of the triangle. Now, that's only when the perpendicular bisectors all hit, okay? That's the point of concurrency. It's called the circumcenter. But it's going to be a different name for different stuff when we do other things, okay? But that's what you need to know is that's the circumcenter, all right? Now, um, okay, now, this circumcenter right here, it is the exact same distance to all the vertices, like this line, this line, and this line. I didn't draw that last one very well. Those are all the exact same distance. I know there's a lot of stuff going on here, but what you need to know is, if you have a triangle, you do the perpendicular bisectors. They all cross at one point. That's called the circumcenter. Okay? That circumcenter is the same distance to all the vertices, to all the angles. Okay? Goody, goody, gumdrops. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, oh, side note for circumcenter, if it's an acute triangle, that point is going to be inside the triangle. If it's an obtuse triangle, it'll be outside the triangle. And if it's a right triangle, it's going to be on the hypotenuse. So some fun facts you can take with you on your vacation. Okay? Now, now the circumcenter, we call it the circumcenter, it is always circumscribed inside the triangle. Circumscribed or... Uh, yeah, circumscribe is what it's called. Make sure I don't say something wrong. Everybody's going to make fun of me. All right? What you do is, that means that if I made like a circle, a perfect circle that touched all these vertices, which I know I'm going to mess this up. All right, let's pretend that that was a perfect circle. That circumcenter, it would be in the exact middle of my circle. Same distance to everything. All right, and I'm making it look more complicated because I thought it would look pretty, but it turns out it just looks like an ugly, trivial pursuit piece. Alright, so that's the circumcenter. Alright, main thing you need to know is the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors meet and it's equal distant to all the vertices. Goodness gracious, I said that like 19 times. Okay, so we got perpendicular bisectors out of the way. Now, that was the three perpendicular bisectors. Next is the three angle bisectors. Okay, now I know you probably think that I just edited that video because I went so fast, you probably couldn't even see me. It was like a blur, <laughs> but I didn't. It was all me. I took some ninja classes in high school. <laughs> Don't worry about it. 
<laughs> okay, so the next one. Let's say we have another triangle. Okay, that looks like a right triangle, but no matter. Whatever, I'll do whatever I want. All right, first one we did was where the perpendicular bisectors meet. Now we're doing it where the angle bisectors meet, okay? Angle bisectors, cut this angle in half. Looks something like that. That one looks something like that. And this one looks something like this. Those are all angle bisectors. Say I cut that in half, I uh, cut that in half, and I cut that in half, okay? Right there, where they all meet, their point of concurrency is called the end center. Okay, it's called the end center. And guess what? It's in the center. All right, like if you wanted to balance this fool, like, like if I had a triangle and I was trying to balance it on a pin, I would probably put it at the end center, okay? But that's just me, I'm just one man. All right, now. Now. Uh, in center, let me see what I'm not telling you. In center is always going to be inside the triangle. Always. You know, circumcenter, it was inside, outside, or on the hypotenuse. In center is always inside the triangle. Now, also, you know how last time we put a triangle, uh, we put a circle that went all the way around it? This time, if we put a circle inside of it that touched every single one of every single one of like the perpendicular bisectors, it would make it where that's the exact center. It doesn't look like it right there because I'm a horrible artist. I have no skills of an artist. And let's see, there's one more thing I need to tell you about in center. And I'll tell you right now, all right? The in center of a triangle, you know last time we did a perpendicular bisector thing and we found the circumcenter and it was equal distance, equidistant to all the vertices. This one is equidistant to all the sides if you go straight there. Make that perpendicular, make that perpendicular, make that perpendicular. That would be all the same length right there. Those three right there, okay? And I know it looks crappy because I have a lot of stuff in here and I'm sorry. Please forgive me, all right? But it's the same distance to all those, all right? So perpendicular, I'm just gonna keep reviewing and going back that way you know. First one we did, all the perpendicular bisectors, their point of concurrency is called the circumcenter. Okay, it is equidistant to all the angles, the vertices. This one, angle bisector. It uh, is where you go from the angle bisectors. Their point of concurrency is always inside the triangle. It is called the end center and it is equidistant to all the sides. But you have to go straight to the sides. Remember what we did uh, last chapter? Talking about the shortest distance to any side makes a perpendicular line. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Um, my, I'm out of breath, so I think I'm just going to end this one right here.